Hello everybody and welcome. I am Matt, I'm Senior Client Success Manager here at White House Custom Color. And just a few announcements before we uh, talk with Jenna today. Um, if you haven't hit the subscribe button for our WHCC YouTube, you're definitely going to want to do that so you get notified of awesome events like we're going to do today. Um, follow along on Instagram, it's at WHCC Pro for all kinds of updates and, and fun things that are going on on Instagram. And then also for any product details, sizing, um, anything you want to know about WHCC products, go to WHCC.com. One more thing, if you do have questions for Jenna as we're talking today, make sure and put them into the chat because we have a whiteboard right in the back of the room. We'll get the question put up on the board and we'll have her answer it live. So again, thank you for joining us. And Jenna, thank you for being here with us today. It is so cool to have you here. No, thank you for having me. I'm loving loving it so far. It's awesome. been a lot of fun. Awesome. It's a great time. And we cooled it down a little bit here in Minnesota for you instead of yes. keeping it at 100 and humid. Which is which <laughs> works for me. I like it nice, you know, nice in, in the 75 is what I'm used to in California. Yes. So yes. I'll take it. Absolutely. So Jenna Lesueur. Yes. Lucer. Yeah, I so organic. I almost got that right. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, yeah, if my husband was here, he'd be able to help us out of it. But yeah, exactly. uh, it's a French last name. So, so tell us more about your background, a little bit about your business. I mean, we have 19 questions to go through here today with you, but just kind of fill in the blanks for people that, that may not have um, heard of you before. Sure, yeah. So primarily I run a portrait photography business okay. um, and even more niche specific, I call myself a senior photographer because most of my work is with seniors. Okay. Um, I work out of Southern California, so I do a lot of work on the beach um, and I also do a little studio work in the boudoir arena as well. Exactly, so, yeah. and no snow. No. Well, <laughs> you know, California has a little bit of everything, but uh, no, I, I'm shooting pretty much 12 months out of the year. December, January beach is still really nice. That's awesome. And for those of us that are in the Midwest that are photographers and in, in a creative field, having that 12 months, that's, that's awesome. Because a lot of us are, you know, kind of six months on, six months off, or we have to go inside and not not freeze our eyeballs, you know, for the other six months. Totally. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember chatting with a photographer once and she was was debating um, doing a course and she was like, yeah, I'm going I'm to be in my off season in January, in February, and March. And I was like, that was like the first time I realized that people are, you know, you have to adjust based on the weather. So very yeah. fortunate in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. So I know from our conversation that we had a few weeks ago, kind of leading up to the live today, that originally you wanted to be a videographer. True story. Yes. Yeah. So how did how does that work? That you you started off in a video realm and you ended up capturing these amazing images that are behind us here. Yeah. So it's really funny. I actually back in the day, back in high school, I wanted to be in the music video industry. Okay. Really? I, loved, I did not know that. I love to be some VH1. <laughs> okay. Like top twenty music video countdown. Like loved it. Um, and so I was like, okay, how can I like, you know, get in that industry? So in college I studied business and, and digital marketing and I purchased my first piece of equipment with the intention of just starting to put little videos together. Okay. And uh, in order to make a little money, I, I started pitching myself to uh, like small businesses, doctor's offices, making small videos for them for their like, client testimonials and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so I, I had this equipment and I was really using it primarily for video and then I kind of stumbled into portrait photography when a friend of mine was like, you know, I see you have that camera, you, you know, can you take some pictures of me in my cap and gown? So, hmm. you know, one thing led to another as they do. And here I am exactly. with a business. <laughs> so you are all self-taught for yeah. the most part then. Yeah, so I, I didn't study uh, photography in college. Um, I, I did take a few courses, so I like invested in online education, you know, yep. maybe not in the formal setting of a university, but but I learned a lot, um, you know, and I feel like these days you have so much information available oh, to you there's, online. There's I endless mean, amount of information. Hello, you know, right? YouTube <laughs> lives. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of places to learn, but and, and a lot of practice, you know, trial and error over the years and still learning. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, mm -hmm. we have to learn. You know, as creatives and artists, you know, you just you, you're like a sponge all the time. Totally. You know, and, and it's fun. That's that's uh, the spice of life. Totally. Right there. Gotta keep learning. Mm -hmm. So, in your business, um, you are primarily high school seniors, mm -hmm. but you also have a boudoir line. Yes. Now I can see that that might be a tough combination there. So, how do you navigate that? Yeah. So when I started to, you know, so I, I worked with seniors first and foremost. That was kind of where my business started to gain a little bit of momentum. 
Um, at some point along the way, I wanted to to shoot boudoir. I just ha I wanted to connect with like an older clientele, people my age, and you know even older. Um, but then I immediately realized marketing these on the same platform is going to be a little tricky. You know, mm -hmm. you have teens, minors, and then maybe something a little bit more mature. So I debated for a long time whether or not to even keep my accounts the same. You know, to keep them under the same umbrella. I eventually decided to kind of branch off, um, but. What I found is it's actually really, it's like a nice balance because um, with seniors, I'm usually outdoors, you know, yeah. in weather settings and working with young teens and their moms, which is which is a lot of fun. And then you get a totally different side with boudoir because you have people going through different events. They're getting married or, you know, they're turning 50 or things like that. Um, and I'm indoors, we have music playing. So it's just like, it, it is nice to kind of change the pace every once in a while, yep. but, um, I, I think that that was, looking back, probably the best choice to kind of just let them run parallel to each other. Right. And you're wanting to expand the boudoir business. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I have some ideas um, moving forward to, to potentially make it something a little bit uh, more than just traditional like lingerie boudoir. Mm -hmm. I want to celebrate women in their businesses, um, in, in just their, their personalities, like their personal brands. So I'm kind of trying to brainstorm some ways to do like a branding slash boudoir vibe, um, cool. just helping women have beautiful portraits of themselves at any age that doesn't necessarily mean you have to like strip down like some people right. may want to do something just a little bit more middle of the road right. if you will or even more professional maybe they want some new headshots so I'm gonna try to play with that spectrum and and see where I land well if anybody can do it you can let's hope <laughs> <laughs> time will tell so you are located in Orange County mm -hmm. um, and this is how you described it to me on the call it is a beautiful beach bubble between San Diego and Los Angeles beautiful beach bubble <laughs> yep. I love that description <laughs> yeah yeah there was this movie um, with Tyra Banks called it was like a Disney movie and she lived in like the middle of America and she called it like Sunnyvale or something like this feels like Orange County to me sometimes yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's gorgeous I'm very lucky to live there yeah so there's obvious um, advantages to a place like Orange County and in California and the beach and everything but there are some drawbacks mm -hmm. to that like even this morning as we are looking at um, this album that was just produced out in the lab which we'll talk about here in a minute you know you're saying there's quite literally thousands of people on the beach and when you're photographing you are having to kind of fight that mm -hmm. you know all the time how do you navigate that with a high school senior that's probably you know nervous to begin with and mm -hmm. they have all these people watching like do you bring like a whistle and like clear people out of the background like how, how do you do that yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I find that it's really important to just be kind of the the guide and the trusted advisor and almost like step into an authoritative role in that kind of setting. Okay. Um, mainly in the sense of like being really respectful of the people who are there to enjoy the beach. That's really what the beach is for, right? Um, you don't throw sand at them? You know, I never have. <laughs> uh, it hasn't gotten to that <laughs> it's point. The first time it's for never everything. escalated. <laughs> and honestly, usually people are really, really sweet at the beach. I mean, the good news about having people around is I always kind of encourage the senior to like, you know, walk around with pride in your cap and gown because you're going to get someone to say like, congratulations, you know, mm -hmm. where are you going? So, and people are always like, you look beautiful. You know, people are very positive overall. But, um, you know, in the sense of how I carry myself with my clients, I just kind of try to make it as easy as possible for them. So I'm very verbal. OK, we're going to walk over here first and then we'll go over to that side of the beach later because it can be overwhelming, kind of a sensory overload. I and like you imagine. said, they have those nerves, they have the adrenaline. So it's important to just kind of be like their little guide, you know, w while you're there and um, and trying to find spots every once in a while that are a little bit more private, just so they have a second to like. Yeah. breathe you know yeah for sure mm -hmm. you know and the images in this album it's so peaceful you know and it looks like you literally have this you know stretch of beach that's all yours that's so that I did my job well then you did yes, <laughs> you did your job very well so in a place that is so beautiful and everybody wants to go to I can imagine that having a brick-and-mortar studio mm -hmm. can be very difficult or very restrictive mm -hmm. just from a financial point of view is mm -hmm. that am i assuming the right thing there that's correct i don't have yeah. a studio and yeah. that might be a contributing reason why yeah <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard i mean um you know there's areas like for example laguna beach is a really famous beach town um and it's really focused on the arts actually there's a lot of art studios there a lot of photographers and stuff um, but with someone like me who when your line of work is primarily outdoors. I mm -hmm. rent an occasional studio here and there, yep. which is great. Um, I haven't found the 
overwhelming need to be inside. Is it something I would like? Of course, you know, that would be so cool to have a space to call my own. Um, so we'll see if in the future that makes sense. But, mm -hmm. you know, being that like a lot of studios in beach towns are so close to the beach, that makes the real estate very valuable. So right. you really have to weigh those pros and cons and ask yourself if the overhead is, is worth it and is it necessary? You know, right. I would hate to have a studio and have it kind of not be put to its full potential, so. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you don't want to put yourself in a stressful situation either. Right. You know, you you have become very successful. You've got a lot of cool things coming up. We'll talk about your, your um, education at the end here. Um, but you don't want to start at the end and then try to figure out a way to make it happen. You know, you, totally. you want to make sure that you have the business that will uh, substantiate that investment because it's a, it's an investment. Yeah, you know, Gotta and run the numbers for sure. and you know what you're doing here. This is all in location, and you're doing well, and people love it. Mm -hmm. So you know, weighing that out, and you know, for those of you that are watching along here, we hear that all the time. We'd love to have a studio. I'd love to have a brick and mortar. It's awesome, but not at the expense of causing yourself stress. Right. You know, it's just it's just not worth it you know in this day and age especially after covid being able to do sales appointments over zoom mm -hmm. all those types of things the world is okay with that now or much more okay than it was before totally so yeah so that's my learning moment for you here today <laughs> <laughs> so in that area um, orange county how does that influence your clientele like as far as like their tastes mm -hmm. and how they're finding you and the style that you photograph does that does that area like lend itself more to mm. you? That's a good question. Um, well, for the for the most part, like the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that these are people who who grew up on the beach, you know. So yeah. it's interesting because when I consult with clients, I ask them, "So, do you want to take beach photos?" and Half the time it's like, of course, like I grew up here, you know, I want to get yeah. those those cool shots kind of walking through the water. And then sometimes you actually have people who want like nothing to do with it because they grew up with it and they're like, eh, like been there, done that. You yeah. know, I have a lot of, of students going to school uh, in the South or, you know, going to the East Coast and they were like, I want to do something with like, you know, a little more of a Southern flair, you know, some cowgirl boots and stuff like that. Um, but what I found is as far as like Orange County and, and whether that influences my clientele. I just know that my seniors, um, or te the teens in general, mm -hmm. they love that like candid kind of effortless shot where it looks like they barely, they just like stumbled and fell into this beautiful portrait, you know? <laughs> they want it to be really That's candid, a great way to describe, just really stumbled natural. and fell. They're like, oh yeah, <laughs> but me? Oh yeah. So that's what I try to achieve for them. Um, it's funny because when I first start working with them, I explain, you know, it's going to feel a little bit posed, but I, I promise you, like the look is going to be very, very effortless. And so, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. awesome. I love the way that you describe that. You know, stumbled and, fall. and fall. That's <laughs> yeah, what they want. Exactly. They, you know, they want, and it's funny too when I show the photos to uh, seniors and their parents. Mm -hmm. The parents always want those close up shots, you know, with the eyes and focus and the beautiful smile. And the girls literally want the ones where they're like, in the distance, walking away, back of their head. You know, it's just it's just a different style, and I think that's just kind of the classic teenage parent kind of right. you know differences. But also, I think it's a sign of of the younger generation and kind of the types of photos that they like. Yeah, for sure. Know. And we will talk about that too because I really thought when we were having our discussion, I loved your your take on um, what the next generation is going to how they're going to respond to social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that type of image kind of fits into that totally. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know the answer to this, but do you love photographing seniors? Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, seniors are just, I don't, I don't think I'll ever get over it. I don't know really what it is, but um, I know that I grew up with, with uh, two younger sisters who just were a huge part of my life. I have an older brother as well, who we just were so close. And um, I don't know, I just felt really natural. And um, as I think I, we, we discussed earlier, I did become a cheerleading coach yep. after I graduated college. And I actually went back to my old high school to coach there. I just have this, I don't know, it's like an affinity for working with that age group. I just think it's, it can be a really hard time being in high school at that mm -hmm. age. So I love to support, especially young women. Um, but yeah, I love working with seniors. It's a lot of fun. I, I'm, I'm thankful every day that I get to do this for, for a job. Absolutely. And just, you know, one of the, the quotes that you said when we were talking is, I love the one-on-one -on -one celebratory nature of it. Right. And I think that's really cool, you know, because you look at your work and it's not just uh, you're going out and photographing. You're, you can tell you are bonding, you're connecting, mm -hmm. you are, you're getting that effortless 
image, you know, out of your subjects. And that isn't just by accident. Like, you can tell you, you really, really love it. Um, you know, and you also mentioned there's so much great stuff going on as a senior. And to have, you know, you be a part of that journey and that time for them, that's, that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And then also, you have a heart of service. And I think that's awesome too. So your your heart's really into it. I mean, you're you're obviously a business person, but you love what you do and you put your heart into it and that shows. And you really need that combination, you mm -hmm. know, to be able to capture images like this. Yeah, and seniors too are one of the only niches where you're serving the senior, but you're also serving the parent. So you really want to try to think about what it's like to be a parent with a high school senior who's about to move away. You know, like that's their baby and right. they're basically turning into an adult and potentially moving out. Um, and then on the senior side of things, it's like the most exciting year. I mean, we probably all remember senior year, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a good time. I'm um, out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like party was like, oh no, I'm gonna miss high school, blah, blah. And then party was like, what's next? Like the whole world is in front of you. So right. those are two very different stages of life. And you're trying to make it a comfortable, enjoyable experience for, for both parties. So there is like kind of a finesse of, you know, making parents feel like, I'm gonna take great care of, of your kid and, and make them look their best. And then making the senior feel like, don't worry, you're still gonna look cool. Like it's not gonna be, right. you know, like traditional, like old school stuff. So, you know, it's that balance, that toss up. Totally. So on that discussion with parents and seniors, it's a perfect lead in and I didn't even feed that to you. So that's good, you're talented. <laughs> so how are the seniors finding you and who is actually mm -hmm. making the decision on using you? I mean, we hear that question a lot. Um, like in discussion from the platform, like who is making the decisions like to, to hire Gen Ren Pro? Between? Is it the, like between parents and the kids. Okay. Yeah. I am found in a lot of different ways. So I, I yeah. always, on my in, my intake form, I'm like, how, I just like to know, you know, like where did, where did you come from? So um, sometimes it's a Google search, which I, I attribute primarily to blogging. Okay. Sometimes it's uh, Pinterest, so Pinterest marketing. Yep. And I would say most of the time it's either Instagram or word of mouth and not TikTok. So like TikTok and Pinterest are great because they're both like search engine optimized, which I think Instagram's trying to get there too. Sure. But what that means is like when people search senior photographer Orange County, like if I have that those keywords on my accounts and things, it's likely that I will come up. So there are sometimes people are, you know, cold leads. I've ne they've never heard of me or met me, but they do that quick search and find me. Um, but mostly I am lucky enough to have a lot of word of mouth referrals, which it's like, you know, someone gets their photos done, they have their graduation party, and then they're chatting about their photos and they send, oh, you have to, you know, you, you have to use Jen, you know, go to her website, whatever. And they, that's great because they just do the marketing for you. Absolutely. Awesome. And that's the best client to have. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Absolutely. And I want to touch on, cause you kind of, you went over it pretty quick that you were a cheer coach yes. at your alma mater. Yes. And that's a very valuable thing. You know, you get into the cheer world, the dance world. Like, these are um, places where parents have invested a lot of time and resources into their their daughters and, right. and their and their kids. So, how did that work? Did 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 you do that with the intent in mind, or did you just want to be a coach and then the rest kind of followed? Yeah, definitely not with the intent in mind. That was during a time when, when I graduated. Um, I actually was working a job. So after I graduated with my business degree, by the way, I didn't go into photography straight away. I got a job in data analytics. So I was doing okay. spreadsheets all day. And um, after about a year, I just you know realized that that wasn't like a creative enough job for me, which I think a lot of creatives kind of find themselves in that situation. So mm -hmm. I, um, I left that job and then I, I moved home and my younger sister was on my, older, my old high school's team. She was like, we need a coach, you know, would you come in? And I was like, sure, I have a little extra time now, you know, I'm, I'm fun employed, as they say. And I was trying <laughs> to build the business up, you know, so I was like taking gigs, I was doing video work. Okay. Um, and then I started coaching, which really just became a fun, a fun experience. I bonded with the girls. Um, I'm still close with them. A couple of them came to my wedding last year, well, which was really awesome. cool. Um, and and so from that, actually, be kind of the senior photography was really revamped in my business from those couple of clients I did when I was back in college at Cal Poly just for like casual shoots. And then now it was really becoming more of like a referral, a growing referral based system. So right. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Um, 
Before we move on here, I do want to remind everybody that's watching along, if you do have questions, make sure mm -hmm. and put them into the chat and we will have Jenna answer them along the way. But I want to ask you this question before I move on here. You mentioned several different social media platforms. Yes. How much time do you spend in a week? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm working on it. So when I your phone sends you your screen time, you kind of cringe? You know? Yeah, I yeah, I definitely turn that on and I'm one of those people who it's like, oh, your screen time's up and I'm like, ignore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, no, I've tried to be very mindful about it. I actually have a new rule um, that in my house, just for me, where I won't you know, be on my phone from like 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., which has been really nice. So like no phone by the bed, no phone. Mm. I just put it on the charger by my desk. It's great. Um, but regarding social media and how much time I spend using it, mm -hmm. um, I, I probably spend most of my time editing little videos together for video content, TikTok and Instagram. Um, and I've just recently outsourced um, Pinterest and blogging. Okay, and we're gonna definitely talk about that. That actually kind of yeah. leads me into my next question here. Um, tell us about how you have utilized a virtual assistant before, because there's a lot of discussion about that in the industry, mm -hmm. and it sounds like you've use somebody very efficiently that yes. way. Yes. Yeah, so virtual assistants are awesome. Um, and it's really important, I think, photographers, especially people who are doing it all on their own, there does come a time where, I mean, overwhelm is kind of inevitable. You yeah. know, you get to a point where you're literally wearing so many hats between shooting, editing, client, communications, and, and whatnot. And then you have social media, which is always changing and updating and new platforms. So it's it can be like the final straw sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think asking for help is, is good if it makes sense, you know, financially. Um, now, virtual assistants, I think, kind of blew up onto the scene, especially, you know, over 2020, yep. when people were start, starting to look for more virtual work. So I um, used to use a virtual assistant. She was fabulous. She helped me with like a lot of different things online. And more recently, I found somebody who does specifically Pinterest and blogging because she educated me that those two things actually marry really well together in terms of driving traffic to your website. That's not going to require you to be so active on things like Instagram and TikTok, which can feel like a like a time suck sometimes, yeah. you know, and you know, and you they want just wear out so quickly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you want your content to last right as much as possible. And if you could have a piece of content you put out still impressing on leads a year down the line or months down the line, like that's where you really want to be spending your time. So I, I definitely plan to to weigh a little more heavier in that side of things soon to hopefully right. free up some more time for marketing elsewhere. Totally. So I know that, and we'll talk about you know your your Pinterest and blog manager. But when you first hired your V a what was the role that they had like what what did you have them do to begin with um to begin with it was you're talking about the one i just got the pinterest no pinterest like and blogging in your, or in the very in beginning your very beginning yeah so the, for somebody that's like considering hiring one like what what is a role that they could take over oh, to yeah. free you up yeah, so one of the biggest things is social media management. So if you do want to get on Pinterest but you're not really sure how and you're thinking like, hmm, like it seems like Pinterest is where a lot of, for example, seniors are looking for outfit inspiration or photography and so why am I not on there? How do I get started? They can help you with that. They can also answer emails for you, you know, so if you're not somebody who wants to spend a lot of time in the inbox, you can always have them go in and be basically like your teammate, your assistant. Yep. Um, and just a lot of admin tasks. I think social and, and emails are probably the biggest ones that at least I've taken advantage of. And about how many hours per week was that initial experience you had? Like how many hours did you pay somebody for? I think she did five hours a week for me. Okay, So, so it was, was kind of light. Fairly minimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just those little tasks to kind of just take off my plate so that I could be focusing on other parts of the business. There's, yep. you know, other options. I know some VAs who, you know, are 20, 40 hours. So okay. it just depends on what you need. And we all have our strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, if it's something that you love to do, you're going to excel at it, you're going to do it all day long. And if you don't love doing it, it tends to kind of get, you Push know, pushed right back a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Totally. And I like how you look at social media. You know, we all have so many things going on in a business, you know, and, and like you mentioned, a lot of times your photographer is the photographer, the salesperson, the marketing person, the, you know, the chief cook and bottle washer. Like <laughs> you do everything at the same time. So to be able to outsource something like that and have it done efficiently, that's awesome, especially if it's just five hours a week. Totally, yeah. yeah. You'll take any any break you can get, you yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. So when we were discussing, you talked about um, Pinterest mm -hmm. and how powerful of a tool that is. Now you kind of like 
flew by it here a couple minutes ago. But tell us more about how you are using Pinterest because I think you're very unique in that. I have not heard a lot of photographers utilizing Pinterest and getting marketing um, value from it. So. Yeah. So I am also somebody who's just newly really kind of harnessing the power of Pinterest and I, I credit my my girl for, for <laughs> helping me out on that because she has been educating me on why it is actually so valuable. I think that when social media really took off, a lot of people were assuming or like maybe just operating under the assumption that things like blogging and your website and like the old school ways of marketing SEO were just not as important anymore because you could just go viral and, and you know, get, right. but, but it's not, it's so much more than being online, you want to be finding the right clients, people who want to work for you, your ideal client, if you will. Um, so for Pinterest, it's uh, apparently really, really valuable because like I mentioned a few minutes ago, your content can, you could post um, a reel on Instagram, then you can take that reel, post that on as a pin on Pinterest, which now supports video as they all do. And rather than that, that piece of content living for a couple of weeks or even a couple of days on something like Instagram or TikTok, you will be able to be found via Pinterest. Your content will be um, popped up in the search months, if not longer down the line. So the value of that is you, anytime you spend your valuable time creating a piece of content and you put it out there, you're gonna get a good return on that investment rather than just pumping out you know, content after content, maybe it kind of flops and you're like, well, you know, I spent hours making that and I didn't, you know, I don't have one conversion to show for it. So right. really just being efficient about where you're putting your energy in, into marketing. So Pinterest is, is really, really powerful. It's yeah. really cool. Now, is there a way that you can find analytics on you know your images and how that's actually working through Pinterest? Absolutely, so Pinterest okay. has a whole analytics panel, which okay. I'm not in charge of, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's another great thing about my Pinterest manager is she will be sending me monthly uh, analytics reports so I can kind of see how things are performing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you'll be able to see if certain pins do well, you know, you can send each pin to a specific URL, right? So like, if I wanted someone to, you know, go specifically to my seniors page, you know, you can post a pin from what I understand. You really want to use keywords that people are searching. So there's a little bit of keyword research to be done as well, which is why I'm like, leave it to the experts. That's right. not really my forte, but yep. putting those keywords on that pin. The idea is that pe seniors are going to sit down or clients in general will sit down at their computer. They're like, okay, I got my senior photos coming up two months. Let me type in senior photo outfit inspiration. The goal is for me to hope that one of my photos, one of my pins pops up and they you know, click on it. And not only do they save it for their own board, great, they have some value there because they get to see that outfit and get that picture, yep. but they can also click through to the blog post that it links to or to my senior page that it links to. And who knows if they might find me and think, I want, I want her to take my photos, you right. know? So it kind of has like a double, a double value to it, right? So the client's getting their value and then potentially putting eyes on your website as well. Yeah, for sure. So they're creating like a mood board. Exactly. And they could actually have the person in that image on their mood board. Yeah, and it's not so much about like, what's cool about Pinterest, it's kind of refreshing nowadays. It's like, you don't have to have this long caption or, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's just really about simple value add um, and, and getting, it's, it's just kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit more, less video heavy, although they are starting to accommodate it, but you don't have to like show up as much. It's more of like, oh, and I should also mention, photographers should really be on Pinterest because we, create content all the time. You know, a lot of people yeah. who own businesses are like, okay, let's hire another photographer. Like we got to get this product shoot done because we got to put more pins out. It's like photographers, like, every time you do a shoot, you have fresh pins that sh to be made, you know? So um, I highly encourage any photographer to at least just play around with it, make an account and, and see how, how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So aside from your um, manager mm -hmm. for Pinterest and your blogs, is there other costs that are associated with using Pinterest the way that you're using it? So from what I understand, Pinterest does not, uh, I mean, it might support paid advertisements, but I don't think that's how people use it primarily, at least not in my experience, that's not what we'll be doing. Okay. Um, I know like, for example, like Google and stuff, you yeah. know, you do paid ads, uh, even Facebook ads or meta. Um, 
but but yeah, I don't. I think honestly, time is the only investment you would you would need to make in, sure. in like organizing the boards and and the pins and the keyword research. Right, like right. That. And, and time can be a big investment. Definitely. But it sounds like you're really getting the return from it. Well, yeah, and that's well. one of those things where I could I have taught myself Pinterest probably. Could mm -hmm. I have like maybe bought a course and just but like the way I see it, there's a lot of other things that those few hours a week could be used for that over time will be wi more wisely spent doing something else. Right, yeah, what's the opportunity cost right, exactly. for you to, to take on that when you could just hire somebody to do it for you? Someone who can probably do it better than me. That's potentially, the, you know. potentially, you said it. <laughs> so it really sounds like your Pinterest and your blogging just really fit together. Mm -hmm. So um, blogging, you hear people like are, are really hot on it for a while and then it's like, oh, I have to sit and write that right mm -hmm. now. How are you doing that in an efficient manner now? Yeah, so I um, I always like after a, a session, I'll create a favorites list of some photos I think would be good for the blog. I will send that to the manager and she actually offloads a lot of the writing part of it, okay. um, which is nice because that's obviously what takes the most time. When I was first building my business, I loved writing blogs. I would like go to a coffee shop, you know, I'd spend like four hours and like <laughs> this blog is, and then now you just, things get so busy and it's just like, I, it's hard to force yourself to be creative. You know, it's like, okay, I have 25 minutes to this blog. It's like, that's not, uh, not your best work, your most like heartfelt writing is not gonna come from that kind of time limit. That, that not to interrupt you, but that's a great quote. What? For everybody listening along, you should, it's, you can't force yourself to be creative. Yeah. It's very, very difficult to be creative. So to not back yourself into those corners. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And it's almost like you have to ask yourself if there are certain tasks that you're, I don't know, kind of forcing yourself to do. It's like, not only are you doing a disservice to yourself, but also the person who's reading that is probably not going to gain much if it's just kind of something you were like, eh, let me get these photos up. Like, I just got to do it for the SEO. Yeah. Um, so again, it's like one of those things where it's like, is it an investment to have somebody else do it? Yes. And th those kinds of decisions, like I never take lightly. I'm always running things and making sure it makes sense. But there are definitely cases where financial investments in, in other experts is going to make you a better business owner overall. Yeah, totally. So there's a handful of people in the industry that somehow like have this magic wand and I feel like you're one of them of you're able to do all these things but you still live your life you still enjoy your life and like how do you work less hours and enjoy life more because I feel like you do that you know thank you yeah. um well, first I want to shout out my husband because <laughs> he's really fun. And um, when I met him, we joked that like he was probably a little too wild and I was probably a little too serious. So we really balance each other, <laughs> balance each other out well. Um, but honestly, time management has become something that just in the past couple of years, I've really prioritized because again, it's like, could I potentially work 24 hours and like really build this thing up? Yes. But like in, in life, you know, you really find that you know, money isn't everything and, and time is really the most valuable currency that you have. And so for me being able to, um, you know, take some time off and travel or I don't know, just have like a really relaxed day going on walks and things like that is, is important. But, but yeah, I try to just like, like in your schedule, like, do you block time? Oh, do you oh, do I block time? <laughs> <laughs> That's you where I was going. You should see me on that. Friday afternoon. Okay. So every Friday religiously, I, on my, Google Calendar, I have a block, it's called time block planning slash tech time. Okay. Okay. So this is, I feel like such a nerd. <laughs> so time block planning is a hour I dedicate, a whole hour I dedicate to looking at the next week ahead and, um, and literally blocking out every single day. And I have this spreadsheet that I use told you I'm a nerd, okay? <laughs> and, and I have a spreadsheet background, so obviously. Um, but the spreadsheet list basically, it's like a master to-do list categorized by like shooting, editing, marketing, things like that. And I'll feed, and also I have a whole category for education, so things I'm learning. So if I'm enrolled in a course or a coaching program, it's like my homework and stuff like that. Yep. And then on Fridays, I will start by looking at the next week. I'll say, okay, how many shoots do I have? Okay, great, now I need to set aside a block for culling that shoot. Mm -hmm. So I usually do that the next morning. I used to do it that night, but I've gotten better. And so <laughs> I go home and I hang out and I don't work. <laughs> so I call the next morning. Um, I have blocks for emails like every other day. I have blocks for uh, master classes. So again, education. And I just feed it in and I it really gives me a sense of relief. Like 
I can't imagine going into the next week being like, let's see how this goes, like, right. because I know what's, and of course things change, you know, things come up, you move things around, but that's the beauty of it is like, if I'm having a day and a task takes me a little bit longer than I thought, the block that I didn't get to, I'm just moving it to another time and potentially moving something else to the next week. And it just really gives you a sense of, of structure. And then I also block off free time, yeah. white space. Like. So really your magic wand is organization. Yes. That's a really good, my mm -hmm. mom says I'm great at organization. <laughs> 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 yeah, being organized for me, it, it's essential, yeah. Yeah, so I wanna go back and hit on this because this, this really struck me when we were talking about the YouTube Live. And this is a, a quote from that day, time is becoming the most valued currency. Mm -hmm. People want their time back to spend with their families and friends. And, and I really think that COVID you know, taught us all a lot of things and that is one of the big ones you know like for me too like we want to have that free time you know work is not everything and and to find that balance like you are leaning on your ability to organize mm -hmm. and to be disciplined with your time because that's hard for people you mm -hmm. know especially for artists so oh definitely yeah yeah so what what research has led you to that that quote that's a strong quote mm -hmm. like what what conversations in, in research has provided you with that knowledge? Yeah, so um, there's this book actually by Jenna Kutcher, who is actually a former photographer turned online entrepreneur. She's fabulous. Sure. Um, and it's called How Are You Really? And that's where I started learning about the idea of time as currency. And, and she is so interesting to learn from her because as a former photographer, I'm like, she gets it. You know, she gets the overwhelm, the burnout. She talks about being a booked out wedding photographer and just how she, she got to that point that we all potentially get to where it's just like, I'm, what would be worse for me to like do this again next year or to potentially lower my work levels and spend time with my family? And then that's when she realized like, but there is so much value in getting time back. You know, you can't really put a price on that. Um, and so once I read that quote, I started to get really invested in learning about um, time management and really energy management too. So making sure like you're doing things at the best times of the day for you based on wh when you're the most energetic. Okay. Um, I read a lot this year. I, I read every single morning for, that was like my New Year's resolution and I've, I've stuck to it. Great. So about 10, 10 minutes every morning. So I've been able to get through some books, which last year I was like, I'll read that, you know, later. But mm -hmm. yeah, so reading books is honestly like, it's great. You just get little tips every day. Right. Yeah, for sure. Plus, it's a nice, calm way to start your day. Yeah, yeah. totally. Before you check your phone or emails. Exactly. Like I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it. First thing I do in the morning, grab my phone. Yeah. You know, I learned pretty quick. At, like after doing that for about like, I think six months or so, I was just like, it's just not, you know, your body, I don't think is meant to handle the like, it's time to work, like with the, within 30 seconds of waking up, you right. know, so yeah, that slow exactly. morning wake up. For sure. So when we were talking about content for today's live, um, we were talking about Gen Z and the alpha generation, mm -hmm. and you had some very interesting um, opinions, takes on what those two generations are gonna look for in social media, mm -hmm. or not look for in social media. Maybe that would be the better way to explain it. Can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of what your feelings are about that and how that's gonna change like marketing and, and photography? Yeah, so for photographers it's interesting, um, and this is not, I mean, I don't have a research study to quote, but just things I've gathered, heard, probably con consuming content, um, is that the next generation, so Gen Z and Gen Alpha, right? Mm -hmm. The one after them? Yep. Um, they are the generation who has grown up with their parents having iPhones and, you know, as parents do, taking a lot of photos and videos of them and things like that. So they're predicting that this generation will be a little bit less likely to be super enthusiastic about being online in general. Um, they may not want to show their faces as much. I've heard that um, they may be online but have anonymous accounts, so they want to consume content, but you know, like things like recipes and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. they don't wanna be famous, they don't wanna be an influencer. Mm -hmm. So that was like really interesting because- It's very interesting. You know, with, with even my generation, it was almost like, that was like the, the American dream, you know? You, you become an influencer, or you, you go viral and just get huge on, on social media, but you realize that there's definitely some trade-offs to that too. You know, your, your whole life is online and you have to take other people's judgment of things that you didn't you know, ask for their opinion for, but that's mm -hmm. kind of like, well, it's like the price you pay. Yep. So I think this next generation with photography, you know, they may you know, not be looking for photographers online and they may not um, 
I don't know, it might just be an adjustment in terms of marketing. But one thing I will say is, and the reason I'm not really worried about it is because things are always changing. And right. as a business owner, like if there's one thing I've learned, it's like, you just have to adapt. That's why anytime anything comes out about an algorithm change or whatever, I'm like not panicking. I just feel like it all adjusts. And you just have to be like, okay, this is the new thing now. Like I'm not gonna get all worked up about right. it. And know? it's changing so quickly. Yeah. You know, you can't even keep up. Yeah. yeah. It, it can be something different five minutes from now. Yeah, and that's yeah. why just, just remain calm, but be open to adapting because I think it sometimes can be frustrating, like, oh, I used to do this with my reels and it worked so well, and now I do that and it doesn't work. Okay, well, what's new? Like, you know, do some research, get inspired by leaders in the industry, just, you know, reading, following people that kind of are, like I said, like leaders, you know, yeah. they know. There's a, there's a couple of people who are really good, um, especially on things like Instagram or TikTok, with just navigating us through those changes mm -hmm. in, in the algorithm. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. No so this this ties in directly to what we just got done talking about. Like, what are some of the requests that you're hearing during your sessions? Like, and I have a couple of notes. So if you don't if you don't say what I want you to say, I'm gonna fill <laughs> in the lead, blanks. Lead me, <laughs> I mean, like a nudge, nudge. But you know, you you mentioned the tripping and falling into oh, know, yeah. stumbling and falling into the natural. Aside from that, what are some other questions that you're getting from your sessions that would lead you into that? Um, what the next phase of social media for the generations would be? Um, for you, so what seniors are asking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think seniors on it's not they're not necessarily asking for it on the session, but what I gather from them in like session prep phase, whether that's like through a questionnaire or through like a consultation call, I like to do a lot of candid style shots. Um, a lot of behind the scenes video of them. I think they like having little clips that they can share online. Yeah. But I think effortless and candid is probably the number one thing that even if they don't ask me, it's like I just kind of read the room of, of teens. And mm -hmm. that's not always the case. Like, and I always make sure I get a variety. I would never deliver a gallery that's like all like, you know, far away pan right. scenery shots. Yep. Uh, you want to get close ups and whatnot too. But, but my goal is to help them feel like themselves, but also like like they get to be a model for a day, you know, kind of like an out of out of the box experience for them. Yeah. And another thing that you mentioned in our meeting was film. Yes. Oh, yes. So, you know, a 17 year old senior that's probably never held a, a role of film in their life. Mm -hmm. That's a question you're getting. Yes. You know, from a digital generation, which is very interesting. Yeah. So I used um, film with one of my um, senior rep teams in a past year. And I remember after that shoot and posting about it, I had a lot of seniors like, oh, do you do film for senior photos? You know, so it's like, oh, OK, it's kind of like this cyclical thing. You know, we right. came back, came back right to it. And that's that's another great point is they love in general. They tend to gravitate towards kind of like the effortless old school, almost like nostalgic sort mm. of looks that we had in like the 90s or even earlier than that. Um, now be careful how you talk about nostalgic. Right, <laughs> uh, yeah, your nostalgic <laughs> and my nostalgic are different. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. So a few minutes ago, well, hour ago or so, uh -huh. we were out in the lab and uh, this is your first experience being here at, at WHCC, and you actually saw yes. an album being made. Yes. So I'm just gonna show this to the camera here. So this is one of the, the new chrome fabrics, and this, I'll let Jen um, kind of page through here, but this is this is one of your, your sessions, and like that's a substantial album. So I'm gonna hand that over to you to kind of peek at, but it was really fun to see you um, watch this being made yeah. out in the lab and meet the team that did it. And you know, it's it's a good representation of your style of work. And again, there's not a thousand people on the beach in those. I'm just astonished. Oh yeah, no, you would think, <laughs> right? You would you'd be surprised if you saw the real number. But yeah. I always tell my clients it's it is a different experience seeing your photos in print. Um, and I know even for me when we got our wedding pictures done, we got the gallery. Oh my gosh, looking at the computer, they're so cute. Then we got an album made and, you know, holding it, it's like emotional, you know, it, it is. is, it's a different weight having your, your photos printed here. Um, and yeah, seeing it made by you guys was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. It just, it really adds even more value to, to an already really special item. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There, there definitely is something that is very emotional about seeing it yeah. in print and having that available. So, so cool. for people that are listening along today and going to be watching the, the recording and the, the rewind on this, yeah. how do they find you? 
And what is something that's really fun coming up that I know that you'd like to talk about? Yes, so if you want to get in touch, um, the best way to find me is my Instagram, at jenrenpro. Um, there I'll be announcing some exciting things coming up very soon that I've been working on to help other photographers grow their businesses. So I can't say too much about it yet, but if you give me a follow on Genren Pro, you'll, you'll have everything you need to know there. Awesome. That was a nice little tidbit. And then what is your website? Uh, GenrenPro.com. Okay. Everything's just Genren Pro across the across the board. Fantastic. Well, this has been great. And we're, we're yeah. honored that you flew in from California to hang out with us Thank in you Minnesota for, me. for a couple of days here. It's, it's awesome. And we've got a busy rest of the day for you as well, Very seeing exciting. some other products being made. So again, um, if you have any questions for Jen after the fact, make sure and put them in the chat. We know where to find her. And she's a very nice lady. I'm sure she'll answer any questions <laughs> you have. Um, make sure and hit the subscribe button for uh, the YouTube. And you're going to get notified for events like this. Make sure and click that button on Instagram, WHCC Pro. Give us a follow on there. And for any product details, questions you may have, definitely hit WHCC.com up. Brand new website. It's very interactive. A lot of fun to look at all the options out there. Thank you for joining us today. Jenna, thank you for being with us. It's, it's our honor to have you here. And we will see you for our next YouTube Live event. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.